come into the stage where I'll need to attach the, the, the upward turning section of the floor to the chassis rail runs through here. And that also includes fixing the sill, the bottom of the door aperture, also to the uh, chassis rail that fits in here. Now the thing is, <coughs> that also involves how exactly the uh, door aperture fits on with the doors. As you see, before anything is attached, the side of the car, if I move you further away, the side of the car actually moves quite a bit, purely in respect of, of how this is attached here. And it also bears onto how the door fixes, or uh, fits rather I should say, here. As you see there is some movement there. So it appears that, uh, uh, because the door has been, let's move you back, the door actually catches, or has a tendency to catch pretty tight fit to be honest just here there is some adjustment on the door hinge um, not all of which I've used it's certainly a very very close panel gap right there so I think um, everything wants to move inwards so what I'm gonna do is use some of these clamps and I'll clamp the uh, outer sill onto the body like that, onto the chassis rather I should say, like that. And that should help me put the rivets which go, I think you can see where the old rivets were just here, this pink mark. Um, so I'm going to put some new rivets in here and that will hold the body in shape permanently. It's really got quite exciting this. I'm getting us to a state where I can actually foresee the body shell being completed, which is amazing. Anyway, let's put some rivets in. Oh, and while I'm at it, I'll show you the back view. You may not be able to see that, it's a bit too dark. This piece here, I've also laminated uh, on top of because I have oh, done the initial stage repair on this damage here. Oh, and taken out its support piece, the alloy that was previously there. Something's obviously gone into that in the past, nothing to do with anything that I've done. So I've laminated behind and now I'll be able to grind out the front before uh, filling it in neatly. So uh, anyway, that's nice and strong now, not bad. That's one of the things with fiberglass actually. Something went into that, okay, it made a hole in it, but if it had been a steel, or metal bodied car, no doubt it would have crimped the wing up here and that's just not something that happens with fiberglass so uh, yeah pros and cons which was uh, kind of stove in not anything to do with me something happened years ago probably um, I ground it out using the flap disc sorry I first of all I reinforced it from the back I started out by a um, um, metal plate here which you can still see the screws screw holes a little bit um, to hold it in line. I then reinforced it on the back side and now I'm trying to deal with the front side and I used the flap disc to get it was all very flaky and so on I wanted to get through the paint the gel coat right down to the base layer and this I think this dark piece here is resin that's come through from the other side when I was reinforcing it so now I need to um, start building it up this side so that's one piece I've done and I'm also, because I've read this is a good idea, 
I'm also um, wiping acetone over the uh, surface to reactivate, I believe, the, um, the resin in there. <coughs> and here I have my um, current system, if you like, for um, mixing fiber gloss. Rather than using a uh, plastic tub, I um, bought these things from the local supermarket were actually cake bases. So it's paper. Um, makes quite a good, um, that's about two or three times I've used these now. It makes quite a good uh, mixing area. And this is uh, isopon resin bought from Halfords. And they're surprising to some people. Surprisingly, it's actually the same uh, type of hardener that you get with a normal body filler rather than it being a um, liquid that you dispense. I'm sure this wouldn't do at all for major projects, so we, shall we say, but um, it seems to be okay so far for these relatively small amounts. Um, and the uh, the objective is to make the colour of the resin the right the right colour to judge the concentration of the uh, hardener, which of course is exactly the same approach that is used with car body filler. So there's my chopped strand mat. So I'm going to focus initially on the on the side repair. So I need a, a small strip of chopped strand mat, which I'm not sure the weight of this stuff, to be honest, it's um, fairly thin, I would say. Now you can cut this with scissors, but of course that gives you a uh, sharp edge, which I don't really want. So I'm going to tear a piece off and see how that works out. Well, that's probably too big to be honest. And of course, what one thing you can do with this, uh, um, if you've got the right tools, my concern here is that I'll, I'll put a piece on that's going to stick up too high. So, that is a consideration. There's not, not that much thickness in there, not at a uh, very broad width anyway. So I'm deliberately feathering the edges, but anything that sticks out, as it were, um, because I've got a flat disc sander, I can actually uh, remove any excess. There we are. So that is that's the beginning of it, and it is going to be a little too wide so I'm going to remove some of the larger feathery bits make it fit inside a little bit more straightforwardly this may be as good as I can get I'll have to take the uh, sander to it afterwards as well anyway let's put that aside for a minute. So let's mix some resin. So I'll just paint a bit on to the damaged area. I think that will uh, do, considering that had been uh, reinforced on the back already. And this is the finished body side repair where it was previously stove in. So obviously fiberglass matting went in there. But to uh, obviously smooth it right over, just standard thin layer of standard car body filler. And that's, uh, that's pretty good actually. 
certainly good for a, a first stage. You can feel a little bit of a raised area just here. Um, but uh, that's for finessing later on when I get to actual bodywork, which clearly is going to be a little while yet. So it's all work in progress. There you are. Yes, yeah, so one of the things that I have noticed is to do with the door opening. And uh, the problem has been that the door was uh, too far in. Um, it's on, it's got some adjustment, but it was too far that way. Um, so I had to uh, enlarge the holes in the, the bracket tray that fixes the door on. Um, to make the door able to come out further. Now, you'll notice now that the door is now Can you see that? The door is now out too far um, because it's uh, suddenly, suddenly dawned on me uh, this morning, really, that um, the body was likely too far, um, or too far this way, actually. And the way to improve the door clearance is actually to move the body over. Now the body is actually attached to the chassis, as far as left and right is concerned, right here, with this section here, which is not joined on yet. Um, and it will be fiberglass and or riveted, but not yet. So all the fiberglassing you see there is from where I, um, as it was cut, you see. So I've rejoined the sections that were cut. Um, and the reason, by the way, that uh, having the door uh, out this far was a problem is because of the internal arrangement of the door hinge. And it's probably going to open really easily now. because it was actually catching the bodywork. In fact, it still is. Oh, there's some more adjustment needed there. It was actually catching down here because the, um, the door, um, compared to its hinge, the door was too far out. Um, and uh, that was like that because I had slotted the holes to make it go in because it didn't line up with the body. You, you grasping me here? Um, so it suddenly dawned on me that the, the body is able to do this since it's only loosely connected at the moment. And uh, so what I needed to do, rather than disconnect the whole thing at the sill, which is what I was thinking, I think I was going to have to take all these lot, lot out um, and shove the whole thing over to one side. But in fact, it's not that bad because as I say, the body can do this at the moment and hence the rope so the rope um, is uh, attached to the windscreen the rope is attached to the windscreen pillar and through to the uh, the mounting on the chassis for the steering column and I have been applying tension by twisting this uh, steel tube and um, Indeed, it has pulled over the body over to the over to the right, so that now there is definitely some clearance. So what I also need to do is readjust those hinges. So that's the next stage. Now the design of these hinges is actually quite quite good really. Um, just two large nuts and a threaded, which is the top one we used to notice, and a threaded um, arm that pivots. You'll be able to see this but it's, it's down, down here. Um, and it's got a big nut on the end of it. So uh, now I should be able to adjust the door outwards.
So I've got quite a bit of movement. Um, the door, I, ca I can't tighten the hinges up at the moment, but um, it definitely moves. Yeah, that's, that's moving by at least a quarter of an inch. And in fact, because of course the other thing is it needs to fit on the other side. So having a look around the other side, you can see where the body has moved as well. Put it down. So here, you, again, you can see the door is now in by about a quarter of an inch, which obviously means that this door hinge also needs adjusting so the door comes outwards. And clearly there's a, a balance to be struck here uh, between the two doors. So um, that's something I shall have to fiddle with. Anyway, that was a little moment of inspiration I had earlier this morning to um, solve the uh, Passen certainly the passenger door uh, fitment issue that I was having. I just have to do some finessing to get it right both sides and and so on. Brilliant. Now my problem has been that uh, the doors have been catching, especially on the passenger side here, and it seems that the reason for that is the whole body. The whole body was too far, uh, which way, too far, too far this way. And so therefore, because the door hinges are mounted to the chassis, they effectively became further in than they should have been. And uh, it's for that reason that I've got this piece of, piece of rope attached, because I can provide tension on the side of the car, at the base of the windscreen, thus pulling the whole body over to one side. And I've measured it actually, even inside the chassis, which you probably can't see in there. Even now, it's still slightly further over to one side than the other. I think this is probably a, a reflection of molding processes and inaccuracies from back in the day, or even any day actually, to be honest. Um, so that I, I can't expect complete symmetry from left to right so that, that's not a problem but what I do want is a door that open and, and shuts and uh, I've got adjustment in the door up and down forward and back in and out and as you see well the top is quite good the bottom is still slightly wrong but um, but it's good enough for the demo purpose so I've now got the door to open cleanly and close pretty cleanly it's held slightly out by the rope actually so slightly slightly not realistic um, but anyway it does certainly um, even now prove the concept the door opens it doesn't catch and it shuts again and the other side uh, because having moved the whole car over by mm, getting on for a centimeter um, of course there was a risk the other side could become a problem instead. Of course this door had, because the body's moved over, this door had to be adjusted as well. And as you can see, again it's not quite perfect, um, but it certainly isn't catching. So thanks to this piece of, uh, piece of rope here providing the tension, I seem to have got door fit both sides. So that's brilliant, and um, of course the rope isn't a long-term solution. Um, so what will happen is when the scuttle panel gets fixed to the chassis, which it will do before long, it will be riveted on in this position, and that will hold the whole body in the correct position uh, permanently. And uh, that should be nice, but it does mean this rope's got to stay here for the time being. So, um, that's the solution to the door opening problem which I was suffering from yesterday where I just could not get the thing to not catch. Now of course I don't really know what the car was like before I got my hands on it uh, because to be honest at that point whether the doors opened or closed wasn't really my top priority um, and they were seized up and things anyway so um, it may be that the doors were never any better than this. 
um, or never the better than they were before I did those adjustments actually that might be the case but we shall never know now and uh, anyway it seems there's enough um, adjustment in these uh, Gilvan door hinges got three dimensions of adjustment which is pretty good actually that's quite a nice design I could show it to you actually actually that's a bit of an afterthought so the what we have what we have are threaded door mount, mount threaded door mountings with a nut on the inside inside and on the outside and corresponding nuts on the inside with a plate to reinforce it and using the two using the two nuts the door doors can be moved either inwards in one go or if you do the top one inwards it forces the door um, upwards once you've tightened the backside one up you can, you can make the door do, do this do that and because there's some adjustment left and right also left and right so um, that is a quite a quite a range of adjustment that's possible that's quite nice <laughs>